If you have a reasonable expectation, they'll be able to pay. They just came on hard times, but otherwise they make a good living. Or you know that they own property. Maybe they share co-ownership with their brother in, in, in a vacant lot. Or you know they have a pretty healthy bank account. They were just stubbornly not paying for some reason. That happens. If you have a reasonable expectation, you can abstract the judgment that you get from them, put it on their credit, make it a judgment lien. You'll need certain identifiers to do that. Date of birth, social security number, Texas driver's license, which you probably and should have gotten in the application process. And so you can abstract the judgment. If there are non-exempt property from which can be seized to pay your judgment, then you get what's called a writ of execution and the constables will go and seize that property and hold a constable sale. And the proceeds of that sale will go to pay off the judgment. If that's not the case, then sometimes just having the judgment abstracted years down the line serves you because maybe their financial situation has changed and now they wanna buy a house. But the title company does a search and because you diligently abstracted your judgment, they come across this judgment lien and then they're giving you a call and saying, hey Joel, these guys really wanna buy this house but they got this $6,000 judgment which has grown with interest over the last five years and they wanna pay it off so that they can get this loan. Where can we send the check? And so it's always helpful if you have a judgment against a tenant to abstract it to make sure that you have these identifiers so that maybe down the line, you can either A, go with a writ of execution to seize non-exempt property, or B, further down the line, get a phone call to clear out this judgment because they want to buy a house.